Hello and welcome to the sixth lecture of Dynamics of Machine course. In this lecture, I am going to explain a very important concept that is dynamically equivalent system. This is one of my favorite topic uh, in uh, Dynamics of Machine course. And before I explain you the concept of a dynamically equivalent system, I would like to tell you that why this dynamically equivalent system is important. Dynamically equivalent system basically allows you uh, us to break a distributed mass body into the uh, an equivalent uh, point mass body. How we can explain this? Let's see that suppose I am having a body which is having distributed mass. Now I am assuming that the length uh, this L is the length of the body and I am denoted the mass of this body, I is the moment of inertia of this body about this axis. So if I will apply the principle of dynamically equivalent system, I will be able to get an equivalent system of point masses where the masses will help us to simplify the system uh, when we make, uh, when we do the dynamic study of complex system. We will understand th this uh, uh, when we will uh, do the analysis for a connecting rod. So basically in one line I would say that dynamically equivalent system allow us to make an equivalent uh, point mass system from a distributed mass system. Now where we use it, so let's see that suppose this is our uh, uh, system of uh, engine where we are having a piston which is having a reciprocating motion connected with a connecting rod and then finally we are having a crane. If I will see the shape of the connecting rod, this is not a simple shape, it's a complicated shape. At the same time the system is moving, the piston is also moving, the crank is rotating and the motion of the connecting rod is a mixture of the reciprocating motion as well as the rotational motion. So now if I want to consider the mass of this connecting rod, in what way I can consider the mass of the connecting rod. So one of the simplest uh, method to incorporate the effect of the mass of the connecting rod in the dynamics of your system, you can break the complete connecting rod into two masses. One mass is you can consider at the piston position and another mass can be considered at the crank position. But it is not so simple that you can just uh, make if the total mass is m you can say m by 2 and m by 2. Why? Because when you will make such system which is now not a distributed mass system instead of that it's a point mass system the new system has to follow the dynamics of previous system and the dynamical equivalent system allow us to make a system which follows exactly same dynamics of the old system. So here I am showing that earlier I am having a system where I am having a piston connecting rod and the crane. When I will break the connecting rod into two masses, now I am having a dynamically equivalent system. So it will allow us me allow us to uh, consider one mass at the piston end. So now when I will solve the equations, I can consider that the total reciprocating mass will be the mass of piston and the one fraction of the mass of the connecting rod. At the same time, when I will consider the rotational motion of the crank, I will assume one mass at the tip of the crank that will give effect on the motion of the crank. So here again I am showing the picture that this is the connecting rod and this is the dynamically equivalent system of the connecting rod. But we have to understand that on what basis we can fix the value of m1 and m2, what would be the distance between m1 and m2 because we cannot say that if the actual system has a length L, the dynamically equivalent system will also have the length L, where will be the position of the centroid, all these questions are very important to understand. So now let's see how we can make a dynamically equivalent system. So to understand that let's consider a case that suppose I am having a body of mass m and moment of inertia i about this axis which is perpendicular to the plane. If I am applying a force f on the body and the line of action of force is having a distance r that is a perpendicular distance from the centroid of the body. 
so now this is your real state condition that i am having a body here is the position of the centroid which is known to me i know the mass of this body as well as i know the moment of inertia of this body i am applying a force f on the body when i will apply this force what do you expect the body will move in the space because there is no constraint so there will be linear motion as well as the rotational or angular motion of this body now i am interested to make a dynamically equivalent system what i will do i will consider instead of having a distributed mass let's break it into two masses one is m1 another one is m2 at this stage i am not able to find what would be the distance let's original distance is l what would be this l dash i don't know where will be the position of the centroid i know but what i know i can assume that if i am going to make an equivalent system the dynamics of this equivalent system should be same of the dynamics of my original system now the question arises that what do you mean by dynamics dynamics means that the linear motion of the combined new system or the equivalent system should be same that means the system if i am writing the equation of mass into acceleration and the force that should be same for both the system when i will talk the angular motion that means i alpha is will be balanced to the moment of all the all the moment of the system so let's see one by one if i am assuming that the new system has to follow the same linear motion as i am having for the original system that means my equation for the old system for the old system i can say that the acceleration of the system can be written as the force divided by the mass of the body because i am applying a force on the body so my acceleration can be written as f is equal to a is equal to f by m and my new system whatever the new acceleration that has to be same that means that a new and a old will be same only if i will say that my f by m will be equal to f by m1 plus m2 and why i am saying so because f is not in my control f is the external force so i cannot change the value of f if i will be able to change the value of f definitely my m will not be equal to my previous system but i am changing my system i am not altering the external force which is there on the system that means i am not able to change the f value if i am not able to change f value and i have to keep this expression that a new and a old should be same that means the mass of the previous system or the old system and the combined mass of the new system should be same so this is my first expression for a dynamically equivalent system that means if you are making a dynamically equivalent system the mass of the previous system and the masses of the new system should be balanced now the second expression about the angular motion angular motion means what that if i will write the expression for my system this is the expression for the angular acceleration so i alpha and i alpha i can see here in my picture that what would be the moment of this body about its center the force and to the perpendicular distance so my perpendicular distance is r so my expression will be i alpha is equal to f r here this is for the old system basically and if i will see the angular acceleration of my old system i can write that f r by i from this expression and this alpha remains same for the new system now see again i am saying that f is not in my control that means that alpha nu should be r by i that means the r should remain same r remains same means what if i will see here the line of action of the force is not in my control so for the for this system also the line of force will pass from this way r should not change if r should not change that means this position of the centroid remains same that means the position of the centroid of this new system remains same or if i have, how i can say that the position of the centroid will be same with respect to the masses that means the moment about the centroid of this mass has to be balanced by the moment of about the center of this mass because when we see the philosophy of the centroid we know that the total moment of the system about the centroid will be zero that means that my total moment about the centroid will be zero that means m1 a is going to be balanced by m2 b i am showing here that the system this is my m1 and this is my m2 so position of the centroid will unchanged and as it is unchanged this expression will be valid so this is my second expression third i am saying that r 
R is giving an expression about the centroid. My I should not be changed. I should not be changed means the total moment of inertia of the old system. Let's the total moment of inertia of the old system is defined by the I. That has to be balanced by the moment of inertia of the new system. And new system is a point mass system. I know the centroid here. So moment of inertia of the total system will be m1 into square of this distance and m2 into square of this distance. If these two distances are defined by a and b, my total moment of inertia will be m1 a square plus m2 b square. So if I will summarize my rules, I know that now there are three conditions which has to be followed to make a dynamically equivalent system. This is my actual system. This is my equivalent system. Now I have defined my system. This is the total length L. I am not saying that L will be equal to A plus B. No, this is not a right expression. So please don't consider that the position of the mass will always be remained at the end of this body. No, this is not a uh, condition which follow the dynamically equivalent rule. To find a dynamically equivalent system, my first condition is that the total mass should be equal to the total mass of the new system. For example, if I am having mass of this body of 10 kg and new system mass is having m1 and plus m2, so m1 plus m2 would always be equal to m. My second condition based on the centroid position that the centroid of the old system and the new system remains same. same. So I am getting that m1a is equal to m2b, so this is my second expression. Third expression is related to the moment of inertia, but here if I will use these two equations and I will put some value in the third equation and I am using this I values mk square. mk square means what? This is my body and this is the centroid of the body and this is the moment of inertia body about this. So my general expression for any moment of inertia can be as mk square where k is the radius of gyration. So when I will consider this I is equal to mk square and this m1a square plus m2 b square I will use expression 2 when I will put value of m1 and m2 here using these two equation finally I will get an expression that is k square will be equal to a into b so this is the third is expression and which is very important why let me explain you because when you are asked when you have been asked to find the dynamically equivalent system all the three condition should be satisfied if you are going to satisfy only two conditions, the system will not be equivalent, dynamically equivalent. How we can understand this? Let's take a case because I have observed that students face problems when they make a dynamically equivalent system and why they fa take a, uh, face a problem. Because when we will see first two conditions, from the first two conditions you can get the value of M1 and M2 if you are going to fix the value of A and B. But this is not the case. Let's understand. Let suppose we I am having a bar of depth t. These are the dimensions of the bar. I am not mentioning the unit here because I just want to explain you the concept. Now this is my body of irregular shape, and I have to make a dynamically equivalent system of this distributive system. So let's mass is density into the cross section area and the thickness. As my thickness is throughout constant I am assuming the density of the bar of this portion and this portion and th for the third portion is same so I am just giving an equivalent mass by in terms of only area it will help me to uh, simplify my expression and if now I am interested to find the centroid because first I should know that what is where is the centroid of this body so let's consider the three section this is my first section this is my second section and this is my third section when I will write the expression for the centroid here I am not going to explain you how I get this expression if you are interested go and check your mechanics book or you can see my video on the centroid so this is my formula for the centroid when I will solve this expression I am getting a value of x bar that is 6.4 that means the position of the centroid of this body this is a 2d picture from this line is 6.4 unit from this uh, from from this line so this is my actual system and my centroid will be somewhere here which is at 6.4 distance from here that means it is 0 0.4 from this uh, uh, this section now I am I know the centroid of my system and if I am interested to make a dynamically equivalent system 
when i will arrange the i will get the total area the total area will be 20 but as i said that i am considering considering my area as mass so my total mass is 20 and now i have to make the dynamically equivalent system i know that the three conditions for the dynamically equivalent system but let's start with the first one that my m1 plus m2 has to be balanced by the total mass of your system that is 20 so my this is my expression one now what would be the second expression my second expression will be m1 a is equal to m2 b now if i will use these two expression i am assuming that one of the mass can be put at this end another mass can be put at this end so now i have decided the position of a and b when i will deciding the position i am saying that the centroidal should be should remains here so centroidal will be here this is the position 6.4 and second one is will be because total length is 10 so it would be 3.6 if i am not bothering about all the three condition and directly i am assuming that one of the mass has to be put here and another mass has to be put here so what would be the value of masses if i am making a dynamically equivalent system using this assumption i am going to put the a value as 6.4 and b value as 3.6 in this expression i will be able to get the value of m1 and m2 so now if i will see here i have broken the total system into two system i have followed the condition that is m1 plus m2 will be 20 because m1 is 7.2 and m2 is 12.8 so when i will add these two i will be able to satisfy the first condition Similarly, I have not changed the position of the centroid. So, is it my dynamically equivalent system? No. Why? Because if I will go and check the moment of inertia, if somehow I will get the moment of inertia of this actual body and let this is I, or if I will equalize this mk square and if I know the mass is 20, my k value will be I by 20 square root. Now, this I is the moment of inertia of your actual body but when i will when you will calculate the moment of inertia of your equivalent system that would be balanced by m1 a square plus m2 b square or i can say that your k square will be equal to a into b if you will cross check you will put the a value is 6.4 and b value is 3.6 your k which is of the original system you will be not able to get the k value that means if you are going to consider only two expression and you will define the position by your own your answers will not be correct that this this is this is not a, a dynamically equivalent system to follow the dynamically equivalent system condition what you can do you can consider one of the distance let's i am assuming that one of the mass should be put at distance 6.4 from here so if i will put a is equal to 6.4 my b will not be 3.6 it will be somewhat different and that b will come something let's 3.1 you can calculate this using the formula here i am not showing for the shortage of the time i want to keep the lecture uh, of a time of 20 minutes so when you will calculate you will find that uh, this b will not come 3.6 because when i will use this three equation in these two equations i am putting a is equal to 6.4 and to get the value of b what i will do first i have to know the k value of the original system in this question i have not given you the k value but when you are having a problem you will know the centroid position as well as you will know the k value once you know the k value and suppose you are assuming that i want to put one mass here that means you are fixing a if you are fixing a so you will first going to use this expression that is k square will be a b you know the k value you are assuming a value so you will get the b value once you will get the b value you will go back to these two equation and you will calculate m1 and m2 value so finally you will see that when you are having a dynamically equivalent system in that you are going to fix the going to fix the position of one mass the second mass and you are not going to change the position of the centroid the second mass will not be at the end some uh, instead of that the second mass will be somewhere here so now this is my dynamically equivalent system where the distance between the two masses will not remain equal as i am having in my original system this distance is not going to be balanced by a plus b this is not a plus b it will be 
this is a and this will be some b dash and a plus b dash is less than than a plus b so now why i am explaining this to you because when you are going to make a dynamical equivalent system you have to consider all the three condition in fact you are going to first fix one of the position of one of the mass in case of a connecting rod suppose you are having a connecting rod you are having a piston and you are having a crank and you want to break the connecting rod into two masses you know the centroidal of the position of the connecting rod as well as you know the i and the m value and the cg value and the k value you cannot just break the mass of the connecting rod so that you will get one mass at the piston position and another mass at the crank position because if you are going to fix the position of the two masses that means you are going to fix the a and b value once you will fix the a and b value your masses will not going to follow the criteria of because once you will fix the a and b value that means the k square is equal to ab but you have not cross check that whatever the k value is there is this a and is this b when they, i will multiply a and b i am getting the same k value so in actual case also when we going to we are going to break the connecting rod into two masses actually the dynamical equivalent system says that one mass you can put on the piston but another mass will not be at the this end it will be somewhere here but actually the dynamical equivalent system is a mathematical concept we apply it to simplify our system therefore instead of having this mass we do some more thing and we finally put the mass here by doing some correction couple method correction couple is another is a complicated concept we will study it in our uh, next lectures but here you have to understand that if you have in the you may be asked in the exam that define a dynamical equivalent system so while you will define a dynamical equivalent system what you need to explain you have to explain that this would be the actual system this would be the dynamical equivalent system and you have to follow these three condition one condition the mass condition second condition is the centroidal condition and the third condition is the moment of inertia condition that means k square is equal to ab thank you